Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's 858. It's uh, it was been like the same temperature all day. It's 66 all degrees. Morning. Yeah, it's like 65 from like two o'clock on. Yeah, it's kind of muggy out there yeah. today. Not a really pretty start to your Monday. Yeah. But Justin Horn's here and he will have your forecast coming up in just a minute. Apparently our kiddos should start school a little bit later and they would be safer drivers. No, that, yeah, that's what it says. That's what the study says. They did a study in Fairfax County. Now the study was done by Harvard Virginia yeah. Research. So Fairfax County and they said that the kids needed to start a half hour later. So instead of starting at 7.20 a.m., they started at 8.10 a.m. and because of the later start, their driving was better. Yeah, this was a study they did back in 2015, as you said, Harvard-led, right? Mm -hmm. They said it dropped significantly, the crash period, from 31.63 to 29.59 accidents per 1,000 drivers. And they say the crash rate was the same for teens in the rest of Virginia when the school times did not change. And there is a reason. They believe they have a reason for this. They believe the reason is people and spe specifically teenagers get more rest. They said teenagers who get more sleep are less likely to make poor decisions such mm -hmm. as not wearing a seat belt or engaging in distracted driving. And I think distracted driving leads to most of those crashes. So they said teenagers are more alert if they're able to sleep a little later. During the teen years, the body's internal clock is adjusted. That causes teens to sleep later and wake up later. And if they're forced to wake up early for school, they drive to school when their body is telling them they should be in bed which of course makes them sleepy and distracted and they don't pay as much attention. I'm skeptical of the study. I'm not, I but am. you're skeptical of everything. Where's your well, soapbox? For starters, it only lasted two years. And for second, they don't say what time the teens go to bed. So if you're gonna go to school later, how many of those teens are just gonna stay up later? But that's not the point. The, the whole point is well, about your, inter no, the whole point of the study, they hope <sighs> other schools will do it. No, listen to me, <sighs> is that you have an internal body clock that tells you, it's like, it's not normal for us to, I don't care if I get eight hours of sleep, it's not normal right. to wake up at two in the morning. No. So I'm still gonna be tired. Okay. So they're saying teens, because of the way their body's developing and their internal clock works, it's better for them to get up later because that's what their body thinks they should be doing. So if they gotta be at school at 720, then they're probably leaving the house at seven o'clock, let's say. So All they're right. probably getting up at what? 6.15, 45 minutes to get ready? 6.50. 6.15, 6.30 somewhere? 6.50, six boy girl. <laughs> ten, 10 minutes to get, to, <laughs> to get out the door. And, depending and on who it is, yeah. So now they're gonna, gonna get 30 more minutes of sleep? Yeah. And that, ten, that 30 minutes is gonna make that much of a difference? Yeah. Okay. Let's I'm, take a look at your I'm rundown. I'll get a soapbox. <laughs> The coronavirus emergency. Three new states are now reporting cases, New York, Florida, and Rhode Island. But the big headline overnight, a second death has now been confirmed in the U.S. A man in the Seattle area, the first death was also in Washington state. Local officials outraged this morning after finding out one of the evacuees from Wuhan tested positive for the coronavirus and was released from their quarantine. And then there were six. Pete Buttigieg's run for the White House is over. I am making the difficult decision to suspend my campaign for the presidency. Starbucks says it has zero tolerance for child labor after an investigation found children as young as eight years old were picking beans for its coffee. Bear County firefighters said they got the call around 945 last night to the 1600 block of Kaya Vincias. The fire was going so strong, the home burning down in just 15 minutes. A massive highway pileup in the snow, 50 vehicles were involved in this crash on Interstate 80 in Wyoming. At least two people were killed. The Vatican is getting ready to release its secret archives. Pope Francis says they include documents from the World War II era during the leadership of Pope Pius XII. NASA expected to reveal the name of its new Mars 2020 rover. The space agency turned to youth for the highly anticipated title by holding a Name That Rover essay contest. Dozens of students gathered near Penn State to pay their respects to a Taco Bell, the restaurant shut down recently, and no one knows why. Students carried candles, sang songs. New York City is ripping out some of the last phone booths still standing on city streets. Nearly all of the booths will be gone by summer, replaced by internet kiosks. But four of them will be kept in service as historic relics. I feel so old. <laughs> Oh no! One of my favorite, See, favorite, so. favorite things is it was on Ellen. It was all over Facebook where they got a teen out of the um, audience, <laughs> gave her a Yellow Pages book, oh. a rotary phone, oh. and she had to look up a certain place in the Yellow Pages and call it within two minutes. She couldn't figure out how to look up the 
tire place in the first one. That's sad. It was hilarious. And then trying, oh my gosh, watching them trying to use a rotary phone was awesome. But I can't believe they're getting rid of phone booths. Not even phone. What's Superman going to do? Superman will adapt. He's a Superman. Nobody carries quarters anymore anyway, so. I know. I used to put one in my shoe. My mom and dad would. Just in case. Just in case. Hey, Justin, here's my question. What would you name that robot? The rover robot? The rover, the rover thing, mm -hmm. yeah. What I, would you name it? I, I, I don't know. Oh, good question, huh? I have to think about that. I, I have no idea. That's, your, that's right up your alley. That kind of stuff, right? Don't you like that? Sure. NASA, space, rovers. Yeah, well, that is all cool. I don't know. I, <laughs> give me some time. I'll okay. come up with something. Think about that. Uh, Temperature-wise, well, right now we're at 66 degrees at the airport, 69 Gonzales, 63 in Valley, 59 Rock Springs. We're off to a warm, humid start. We're going to be up around 77 this afternoon, mostly cloudy. Humidity is staying with us. It's going to lead to some storms, I think, as we get into tomorrow. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the visibility out there. Rock Springs, one spot that is down close to zero. Otherwise, we're doing okay fog-wise. We had a little bit here in San Antonio, but not much. 71 degrees by noontime, 75 by 2 o'clock. We're up to 77 this afternoon, mostly cloudy. Southeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. But the big story this week is going to be the storms tomorrow night. We're going to break it all down for you coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. All right, thank you very much. Uh, there's an accident at I-10 and Bernie Stage Road. You see police officers are on the scene, a couple of vehicles, and they do have one lane blocked, obviously, as they're in, you know, working the, the um, accident scene. So keep that in mind if you're heading in that direction. In the meantime, top stories we are following today. San Antonio police need a help tracking down a couple of robbery suspects. Police say a man and a woman got away with some money from a truck stop on the east side. Take a look at these pictures. The robbery happened back on February 2nd. It was at the Flying J Travel Center. That's in the 1800 block of North Foster Road. Police say the suspects walked up to the cashier with a gun and demanded money. The cashier had a brief struggle with the suspects, but they eventually got away and they did have some cash on them. If you recognize the people in these pictures, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP, a cash reward being offered for information that leads to an arrest. Today marks the end of the 14-day quarantine period for the Princess Diamond cruise ship evacuees at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. So that means those people will be allowed to leave today. A plane carrying 151 passengers evacuated from the cruise ship arrived at Lackland back on February 17th. Nine of those people tested positive for the coronavirus during their stay at Lackland. That brings the total number of cases in San Antonio to 11. The patients are being treated at the Texas Center for Infectious Disease. Here at KSAT, we've done a lot of stories about the coronavirus, and you can find the latest on our website. Just go to KSAT.com and search for coronavirus. All right, everybody, tomorrow is Super Tuesday, the last day you will be able to vote in the primary election. All polling stations will be open tomorrow from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m., and you won't be restricted to your designated polling station anymore. You can vote at any of the voting centers in Bear County. But don't forget to bring your important documents with you. You won't be allowed to vote without a valid photo ID or another form of identification. If you want to find the closest polling site near you or look at a sample ballot, go to ksat.com, click on the Vote 2020 tab. It's at the top of the page. Today is a very special day for the Lone Star State. On this day in 1836, the Texas Declaration of Independence officially adopted. People in San Antonio are celebrating accordingly this morning. Max Massey joins us live at the Alamo. So Max, what's going on over there? <laughs> Good morning, guys. Everything's still getting set up, but there is a lot going on here. There is several different instances of living history. Just behind me, a copy of the Declaration of Independence of Texas. And like you said, signed 1836. Now we are joined here by Ernesto, the curator of the Alamo. So what's the plan for today? Today we have many activities honoring the 184th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence of Texas. We have living history in the back, as we always do. We have a special treat. We have a blacksmith here, which is not usually here. We have weapons demos, we have uh, writing demos, and then we also have um, cooking demos. When people come here today, what kind of stuff can they expect to learn? They can expect to learn what life was like in the 1830s with an emphasis on the Declaration of Independence. Now, why is today so important for the people of Texas? It's really important because 184 years ago, 59 delegates signed the Declaration of Independence against Mexico. And when they did that, it brought with the concept of an independent Texas, which was led, led to an independent way of thinking for Texans. 
Ernesto, right, thank you so much. My Appreciate pleasure. your time. And guys, don't worry, we are going to join you back here at 9.30 and oh, give you a little sneak peek of the Weapons Expo. We're actually just checking it out. It is really cool stuff. We're going to see if we can even get some live demonstrations. Tune in at 9.30. All right, Max, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. It looks pretty good. Makes you feel like you're in 1836. Yeah, it does kind of. Do you remember that time? Just kidding. Your time now is eight minutes after nine and 66 degrees. Did you visit the cattle barn at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo this year? You may need to be checked for rabies. Erica and RJ have details on that and much more on what's trending coming up. San Antonio Spurs are still alive. They won this weekend against the Magic. We have highlights coming up later in this newscast. And a hostage situation in a mall in the Philippines is finally over. How it all came to an end after the break in your morning headlines. And checking the stock market, rough week last week, but at least it's in positive territory. Not by much, but 38 points up at 25,442. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. The Video Game Developer Conference, an annual event for video game programmers in San Francisco, has now been postponed due to the coronavirus. This comes nearly a week after the city had declared a state of emergency. The event was scheduled to take place March 16th through the 20th, and major participants like Facebook, Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft all announced they would be skipping the conference. Organizers have not yet announced a new date, but are expected to later this year. Well, Harley Davidson's president and CEO, Matthew Levitich, is stepping down from the embattled motorcycle maker after 26 years with the company. He's going to be succeeded by board member Jochen Zeitz. This news comes as analysts have become increasingly worried about plunging sales over at the company as they struggle to lure in new customers. And Jack Dorsey could be ousted from his post as CEO of Twitter. This is hedge fund. Elliott Management Group is planning a replacement. It's all according to a report from Bloomberg. The fund reportedly has a sizable stake in the company and so far has nominated four directors of Twitter's board for the position. The fund says that Dorsey has caused concerns all due to his desire to spend half a year in Africa. Twitter so far has declined to comment. And the Chatter Business to Tech update. I'm Baker Machado from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And welcome back. Taking a look at your morning headlines. A day-long hostage crisis at a mall in the Philippines now over after officials say the suspect released dozens of hostages. Police say the suspect is a security guard who was recently dismissed. The situation started after the man shot a security officer and took dozens of employees hostage in an office. Police were in a standoff with the suspect for several hours until eventually the man walked out of the mall and released the hostages. The suspect taken into custody. It is unclear what charges he will face as of now. Two Chicago police officers are now on administrative duty after an officer-involved shooting. The incident caught on camera. We do want to warn you, the video could be hard to watch. Officers trying to arrest a man for moving between two train cars. That's a violation of a city ordinance. Now, the video shows the man struggling to escape custody. One officer tries to tase him, and then the man breaks free. One of the other officers fires twice. The man is now receiving treatment for two gunshot wounds. Chicago authorities are dropping the charges against him. Instead of a winter wonderland, people living along the shore of Lake Erie in New York woke up this morning to a winter nightmare. They found their homes completely encased in thick ice. Take a look wow. at this video. All the ice is the result of two straight days of gale force winds and freezing temperatures. Of course, the big problem and the big concern, all that ice covering those houses, it's three feet thick, so you're kind of worried about the structural damage that it might cause. That's unusual, is it not? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that little before. little unusual. I've seen a couple of things, but not to that extent. That's that's a whole nother level. That's a bummer. Yeah, it's just, just cold. <laughs> <laughs> the door won't open. Yeah, yeah it's no. It's frozen I, jet. You know, that, I, I do wonder, like, if someone's actually in that house. Yeah, they can't get out. They can't get out. Blow dryer. <laughs> if that goes through the walls. Oof. Well, yeah, well, yeah. How do you get out of the house is what we're saying if the door is if high you shut. Blow, you blow, never more. You're going to need like 100 blow dryers. <laughs> yeah, you need more than just blow dryer. Yeah. Well, oh, well, we don't have to worry about that around here. No, we have the opposite issue. It's, it's muggy, it's warm, it's almost hot. We're going to see some warm temperatures today. Here's a look at the time lapse this morning. It doesn't show us a whole lot other than, you know, we had some lower visibility there for a time, but the clouds have hung strong. 66 degrees right now. Dew point is at 62, so that's... Very humid air with southeasterly winds at about seven miles per hour. Dew points 
around the area in that muggy range. So once you get into the 60s, that's when you really do start to feel it. We may even see a few dew points climb up close to 70, closer to the coast this afternoon. So this is spring-like air that we're in here. And uh, you see the cloud cover fairly thick. We've got uh, the, the morning glow clouds. We've got some high clouds over top of that. So that's why I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of sun today. 62 degrees, Kerrville, 63, New Valley, 63, Carrizo Springs, a few 70s on the map too. Victoria, Corpus, Laredo, all looking at low 70s. Here around Bear County, mainly mid 60s for us, 66 at Stinson, 66 at Port SA as well. Here's the big picture, and you look across the country, a lot of rain, and yes, there is some snow up there across the Great Lakes. That system is moving east. What we're keeping an eye on is this spin in the atmosphere down here. Water vapor shows it very nicely. This is our next upper level low, which is going to move towards Texas. It's going to give us the lift that we need to get some showers and storms going tomorrow night. It's actually moving on a pretty favorable line here uh, for the potential of perhaps some strong storms. So here's what Futurecast is showing us. By 5 o'clock today, just mostly cloudy skies. As we get into tomorrow, frontal boundary will sag south. This may or may not make it through San Antonio. Regardless, it may kick up a couple of showers. Then we'll wait for the main line to get here of showers and storms. This is at 2 o'clock Wednesday morning. You see a uh, line developing there, and this will push towards San Antonio, say, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. And then by 7 o'clock, a lot of this is starting to push east, and we'll get some clearing skies on the back side of this. Some clouds may hang around for a time on Wednesday, uh, just on the back side of the system. Uh, the severe weather risk tomorrow, you can see most of the areas in a slight risk, and that basically on a scale of 1 to 5, we're, we're at 2 here. So this is low wind, but it's there. We got to watch it. And so when we're talking about severe weather, uh, what we may be looking at here uh, is uh, hail and wind. I think are the two biggest threats and then also flooding. We'll have to watch for that if we can get some pockets of heavy rain, which at this point seems possible. There's enough moisture in the atmosphere and uh, could be half an inch to an inch in some cases. As you go north, these numbers are going to go up. As you go south, you'll get some lower totals. We may get to uh, push these numbers up a little bit going into tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on it. But uh, this could be some healthy rainfall for us. Unfortunately, it is going to come with some severe weather, it looks like. So the forecast for today, 71 by 12 o'clock, 75, 2 o'clock, 77, the high temperature, mostly cloudy, 73 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain, but we up that to an 80% chance Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. A little cooler behind this system, 70 on Thursday. Notice the morning lows dip back down into the 40s. Uh, so it does cool down and the dry air moves back in. And then next weekend, we... Spring forward, yeah. Leslie. Yeah. Leslie's favorite Ooh. day. Oh. Not feeling it, huh? No. Makes me tired for a while. You got a whole week to prepare. I'm not preparing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to jump in and do it next <laughs> Monday. Okay. Still ahead. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Cookie Dough Overload. That's the name of Bluebell's new ice cream flavor. Erica and RJ have some details on that. It's trending. And welcome back. Several stories trending on KSAT.com this morning, including a warning to those who visited the cattle barn at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. RJ Marquez and Erica Hernandez. Welcome back, Erica. Joining Hi guys. us live with details this morning. Happy Monday. I know. Happy Monday. Well, this is not a so good like yeah. announcement you want to hear right after the rodeo, but it is very important that we get it out there. The Texas Department of State Health Services is notifying people who visited the cattle barn from February 11th to the 14th that they may need to be assessed for a possible rabies exposure. Oh. Yeah. yeah, guys. Uh, so according to health officials, a cow in the cattle barn developed rabies and was capable of spreading the virus. The solid black cow, a Brangus heifer, was being shown by a student from Hopkins County. Public health officials have been in contact with the people who were caring for the cow and the animals in nearby stalls. Yeah, so rabies is spread through the saliva of infected animals. Anyone who put their hand in a cow's mouth or nose or had contact between the animal's saliva and on an open wound or mucous membrane like the eyes, nose, or mouth should be evaluated for rabies exposure. Now, the Bear County residents who have questions may contact San Antonio Metropolitan Health District. We have the number on this article up right now for ah, more information. Ah, scary. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, it's treated, but it's a painful treatment. It's, yeah, it's, it's like shots, right? It's like injections. It's, it's, it's a series, series of, of shots, injections. Right? Yeah, it's a right. series yeah. of shots, yeah. yeah. They're, so, they're not that, that 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 we know uh, we don't want former Spur had to go through that. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> With the bats. But I'm just curious, like, how, because we didn't really, I didn't really understand, like, how does it just develop or does it get a, 
Like, how does that happen? Like, when you're... I think that the, the secret to being treated for rabies is to be treated before you show, show symptoms. Right. Signs. Yeah. If you have an exposure, they usually will put you... Put out in the you know, Get you on a... Treatment, treatment just in case. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's good they, uh, they've they caught on to this, too. Earlier, yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Found it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, uh, next up, uh, moving on here, Tony Romo staying put as the CBS NFL analyst, and he's getting paid. Over the weekend, it was announced that he agreed to a record extension. Yeah, Romo's new deal is worth, get this, $17 million a year for the next three years. But it can grow. After 2022, if the NFL extends its rights deals with CBS, that means Romo's deal extends by seven additional years. Mm -hmm. ESPN wow. was expected yeah. to make an aggressive bid for Romo, but never really got the chance. Romo, of course, was hired by CBS in 2017 after he retired. He had played 14 seasons with the Dallas Cowboys. And, I mean, uh, that's man. a lot of money for an analyst. I, I never <laughs> made that kind of money playing. <laughs> he made, I checked it. I checked his career salary before we came on, and he made it uh, twice. In 2013, uh, with the signing bonus, he made like 26 million, but everything yeah. else was below that mark. And this so, is a much safer yeah. gig. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say he's not gonna. And <laughs> well, yeah, he did it right because ESPN came after him, and he went, hmm. Yeah, there we yeah. go. See what's yeah, so he got definitely added, so. uh, kind of uh, kind of used his leverage there for CBS. Yeah. Yeah. But when you look at Romo, I mean, he's done such a great job. I on thought he's a great yeah. analyst. He's really fun to listen to. He really kind of approaches it more like a fan, mm -hmm. fan slash analyst. So I think it's pretty cool. Stuff. And a former player because he yeah. kind of like knows what's going to happen ahead yeah, of time. Almost seems like cool. so. Yeah. <laughs> so finally, it's never too early to talk ice cream. Bluebell has announced its first new flavor of the year. Yes, this newest concoction is called Cookie Dough. Overload. Uh oh. The flavor will include classic vanilla ice cream, hints of brown sugar, chocolate chip, of course, cookie dough, peanut butter cookie dough, and fudge cookie dough. That's a lot of cookie dough. It's yeah. all in one? All in one, yeah. Oh. Starting today, it will be available in half gallons and pints, but for a limited time, Bluebell says this is the first new flavor of the year, and there is more to come along with the return of other fan favorites. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. There's a lot of cookie dough in an yeah. ice cream. You know, what was that meeting like? Let's just pack as much cookie dough as we could. What? That's round, wound up like an eight day clock. Oh, is that what that That's is? That's what that is. I have to eat that. <laughs> That's a lot of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. A lot of cookie dough. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> anyway, here are the National Days of the Week. Today is National Read Across America Day or Dr. Seuss Day. Yeah, tomorrow is National Anthem Day. Wednesday is National Grammar Day. Thursday is Cheese Doodle Day, which we looked up is actually Cheese Puffs. I don't know why you call it Cheese Puff Day. day. Yeah. Have y'all seen, speaking of Cheese Puffs, the ad on Facebook for the, the little finger covers for eating those so they don't get... Of course. All no. Yeah. No. That'd be good yeah, for hot Cheetos. That. You that's get all brilliant. red and hot Cheetos, too. Yeah, so that takes the fun out of eating Cheetos. <laughs> yeah, you don't you get that extra. That's the whole idea. Anyway. It's out there. I'm surprised <laughs> making money on it. Friday is <laughs> National <laughs> Dentist Day uh, and that. Oreo Cookie Day. Saturday is National Cereal Day. Yeah, and Sunday is International Women's Day. And don't forget, Daylight Saving Time. No, uh, I want to yes, forget that, please. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We don't like that one. Yeah. <laughs> so Dentist Day and Oreo Cookie Day are on the same day? So you go to the dentist and you go eat some Oreo cookies? Or other way around. Oh, uh, yeah. Get that <laughs> dentist the ice cream, right? <laughs> oh, stuff in your teeth. Hey, Mr. Hey. Dentist, fix that. Perfect time. All that on KSED.com. Thank you, guys, Thanks so you. much. Your time now, 927, 66 degrees outside. Lots more ahead on GMSA at 9. On this day, 184 years ago, the Lone Star State adopted the Texas Declaration of Independence. Let's check back in with Max Massey to see how the Alamo City is celebrating Texas Independence Day. And you probably heard the saying, laughter is the best medicine. How one local comedian turned to laughter as a way to improve his mental health. And the Spurs finally getting a win after a nail biter against the Orlando Magic. We've got all the highlights and discussion coming up next. Your, your buddies, your pals, they came through the other night. I know, I'm so proud of them. Do you have a picture with Jakob Purdy? Wow. Yes. You do? You do? Yeah. That's good, because <laughs> poor guy got hurt. Yeah. So that makes me that really picture. sad, I know. <laughs> so, and it yeah. sounds, what is it, it's an, um, a, a sprained yeah, or? MCL, MCL sprain. Yes. Sprain. Yeah. MCL sprain. So that was the bad to come out of that. Of course, yeah, the really win sad about that. over the weekend, it was a little shaky there at the end, oh. though. I heard. Yeah, we'll get to that here in a bit. Of course, Spurs taking on the Orlando Magic here at home. Uh, really kind of every game now is a must-win game for them. They're a few games back of uh, Memphis still. And here's that injury to Jakob Pertl. Ah, looks pretty Bang painful knees, there. And his yeah. knee took the brunt of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor thing. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah. That hurts. Mm. Look, you see how it kind of yes. bent where the knee doesn't bend? 
the way the knee that's supposed to be. Oh, bend. poor yeah. thing. Yeah. So, so the Spurs announced yesterday that Jakob uh, suffered the MCL strain. Now, Jakob actually went to <laughs> Facebook. This is kind of interesting. He went to his own Facebook page and posted that he would be out for about two to four weeks. So, uh, Jakob <laughs> keeping the fans informed. Yeah, thanks. Tough loss there. But, um, yeah. All right, so the Spurs, again, uh, taking on Orlando and really kind of kind of need some of these uh, these guys to step up. Drew Eubanks had a nice game for them there. Eubanks from the corner, boom. Yeah, he's the G League guy. He's the guy yeah. who's kind of going back and forth. And remember uh, Luka Simonich, mm -hmm. the, the, the guy they drafted, mm -hmm. right? He might get to play. Now that they yeah. well, that, I mean, I think one of the reasons I'm so sad yeah. is they – need all their players yes, to stay healthy do. because they're having such yep. a struggle to begin yes. with. They can't really afford this. They're going to have to have some guys step up. Next yeah. man up. Yeah. So, uh, so here we go. Spurs up one final moments of this oh, game. God. And look at the way that they kind of just I can't botch I, this. I, uh, <laughs> I almost so. closed my eyes on this. And I went, they're just, and they blew the layup. Okay, so yeah. they're, so so that was the end of the game, right? Did, did you? That was are, it, are right you there. with me on this? See, they you. did it again. <laughs> but at least they came out with a win. Inbound pass. Look, watch. watch. Oh, we missed it. Yeah, Patty, Patty was Mills screaming was going and nuts. Yeah. And, and uh, Rudy Gay didn't see him. Patty Mills was, on, was at, at the opposite end. Rudy Gay was looking right, and Patty was on his left. And Patty was, like, wide open. Just throw it to me, throw it to me. And he's, I'm right he's here, guys. Right. I'm right yeah. here. Uh, like, oh, great man. defense there by Patty Mills, though, to kind of save this game for the Spurs. Uh, they get the win 114 to 113 there, 25 and 33 with 24 games left. Oh, so, and all right, so what's the math? How many do they have to win, or does it depend on how many – well, we just got to hope that right? other teams lose, yes, and that we continue to win. Uh, right now it is a three-way tie for ninth place. Mm -hmm. So each one of these teams is three games back from Memphis. New Orleans, Sacramento, and the Spurs yeah. are all three games back. They're tied, mm -hmm. all three games do, back. Do we face either Memphis. one of those again? New Orleans three times. Three oh, times. Wow. Yeah. That would be Zion Williamson. Unfortunately, yeah. Zion Williamson is starting to play <laughs> yeah. really well. <laughs> yeah, oh. Zion Williamson is playing yeah, great. So. Uh, so, yeah, again, the uh, Spurs coming in here. They play tonight against Indiana. So they play tonight, and then they hit the road for three more games. Uh, so back tonight's to back, game right? is pretty big. Again, we're not sure if LaMarcus Aldridge is going to yeah. play. He's been doubtful. He's missed the past two games with a shoulder injury. So Gotta no yuck Those up, guys no healthy. Yeah. Yeah, this is not the time to be getting hurt. That's for no, sure. This, this, certainly not. This All right. When you Tip need off 730? So 730 tonight. Tip off 730 tonight, yeah. and uh, go Spurs go. See if they can get this done here. Yeah. All right, let's go take you outside live cam on your Monday morning, the second day of March, and it's feeling not like March, really. No, it's, it's warm, it's humid. We got temperatures in the mid-60s. Temperature hasn't changed much since what we had this morning. We've basically been right there at 65, 66. We'll get up into the 70s today. Pollen count is in. <coughs> One thing we do know about March is that oak tends to increase. And it's slowly doing so. It's at 60 today, but that's the one I want to watch because uh, we are starting to creep into oak season, and that number will likely grow. Mold, mulberry, hackberry also in today's pollen count. Uh, looking at visibility, everybody's doing just fine, except for Rock Springs, where visibility is close to zero. So that's one spot reporting some fog this morning. High temperatures today, 77 here in San Antonio. Cloud cover will keep us from getting into the 80s, but I do think that we will see some 80s down to the South Carrizo Springs over towards Eagle Pass and Cotula. And the forecast for us, by noontime, 71, 77, again, for high temperatures, southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll talk more about those storms coming up here in just a few minutes. That arrives Tuesday night, by the way. That's coming up. All right, here's a look at the uh, highways. Moving pretty good right now. 410 and Callahan right there as we kind of take you around the horn. There's a stalled car on the inside shoulder, but traffic seems to be working its way around that vehicle. Well, happy Texas Independence Day, everybody. On this day, 184 years ago, Texas officially declared its independence from Mexico. Max Massey is hanging out at the Alamo, kind of in a time warp. He's hanging out like they were in 184 years ago. He joins us now live with what's going on today. I love the hat. Good morning, guys. There is a lot going on, a lot of living history. We have blacksmiths, we have food demonstrations, but this is, to me, the most interesting. We have weapons from the 1800s, 1830s. We are joined by Joe, one of the volunteers. So, Joe, tell us about what we got right here. Well, basically, uh, this is uh, what I consider one of the more beautiful weapons that we have here, and this is a would be called a long rifle. They had Pennsylvania long rifles in Kentucky. Kentucky long rifles didn't have as much fancy stuff on it and was probably more 
used uh, typically by the Texian defenders and particularly the hunter trapper types, maybe a Davy Crockett type. Uh, it is a flint block weapon, which was the predominant weapon at the time. They did have pistols here, we think, and uh, certainly there would have been. Uh, the only weapon that we know that was actually here at the uh, Alamo we do have possession of, and it was a Pennsylvania long rifle, and it was flintlock as well. Uh, the old muskets, uh, uh, they were loaded. Many people know about these. These are paper cartridges. They would just bite off the end of the cartridge, pour the powder down in it, stuff the paper and the ball and everything down in there. And, and the bullet at that time was a lead ball. And uh, it, this is a Civil War bullet, and uh, most people think that this is what was used, but no, it was a round lead ball. This rifle here would have been accurate to 150 plus yards, so uh, it was a very effective weapon for uh, killing the opponent, needless to say. Perfect, Joe. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. And Joe, talking about loading the weapons, what we have right behind us, they are loaded and they are ready to show a live demonstration of some of these weapons. So guys, that is just some of the fun going on here today at the Alamo, and it is free all day long, and it goes on until about 4.30, 5 this evening. That is pretty cool. That's Joe. some really neat stuff, wow. and I love how they're dressed the part, and it's really educational and very interesting. So Max, how loud was that when they shot those rifles? You know, guys, I am having some problems hearing you right now. I'm not <laughs> sure if that's my IFP. Or the gunfire. We'll see. <laughs> His ears are ringing. His That's ears how loud are it ringing. Was. Thanks, Max Massey, reporting That's live. Cool. Lots of fun. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, yeah. This is yeah. a great story. It has got a whole lot of people talking, and it's about uh, how you discipline your children. <laughs> a mom from Texas shared a photo on Facebook of something uh, she witnessed in a bathroom at a Hobby Lobby. The mom was getting her son to behave by making him do push-ups in the bathroom of Hobby Lobby. I think we have the picture that we're so, going to Yeah, show. so another lady saw it, took the picture, and then praised this woman for the way she disciplined her, her kids. While she was trying to hang on to her kids, Yeah. So she, she, she praises this woman on Facebook. And so when she did this, it went totally viral. People started sharing it, started weighing in on it, discussing it. So, is this appropriate or not appropriate? Um, it said, to the woman in the Hobby Lobby bathroom, if my hands weren't full of children, I would have <laughs> applauded you. As your son gave you the back talk of the century, you stayed calm and collected while adding 10 more push-ups to his already growing number. Yeah, Nikki Harper Quinn found out about the, the uh, photo when one of her friends found it and showed it to her. She said she was surprised it went viral, but she said, I knew we were on to something and this was bigger than me. It opened up a conversation and a debate that is making everyone think outside of the box as far as discipline is concerned. She said, we need more parents like her who are not afraid to parent their own children because yep. of what someone else might think. He said, apparently, Mama, this is a bathroom floor. Gross. And she said, well, maybe you shouldn't have been acting obnoxious. Ten more push-ups. <laughs> and, you know, the, the thing about that is if the kid's capable of doing some physical exercise, then what's wrong with making him do, do some push-ups? It's good for him. I think it's great. It gets him He's in Getting exercise. Yeah. It's teaching him discipline. Yeah. Yeah, she shouldn't have been obnoxious. That's, he won't be obnoxious in that bathroom ever again, I guarantee you. Mm-hmm. Or he'll be doing more push-ups. <laughs> A lot more. She's be in not, good shape she's she's not scared. Over. And what I liked is the mom had one child under the arm <laughs> and telling the other one to do push ups. A kid acts up anymore, he'd be the best in shape kid and cool. That's right. It's going to thank her one day. <laughs> it's 9 41 and it's 66 degrees outside. You're watching GMSA at 9. Hey, many say laughing heals the soul, and that was the case for one local comedian. How comedy improved his mental health. That's coming up next. Welcome back. It is 9 44. Well, he's a stand-up comic with a dream to one day become a movie star. Cousin Berto, or Albert Arona, has gone through his share of obstacles, but he has a message to inspire others to follow their passion. Jaffe Gray tells us how he overcame his anxiety to impact others through laughter in this week's What's Up South Texas. <laughs> Does this look good? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Having a great sense of humor has always been a part of stand-up comedian Albert Orona's life. We need laughter. I know I do. I know my credit card bill just came in. Offstage, Albert is shockingly shy. Turn it off. 
turn the camera off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but on stage, Albert, or Cousin Berto, is a different man. I love people and I love to make people laugh, so. He grew up on the north side of Round Rock, Texas with his parents and six other siblings. We didn't have running water in the house, you know. Um, there was times when all of us had to sleep in one, one room. Albert, who also suffers from anxiety, learned to laugh through the poverty and even bullying. You know, I was always funny. I was always making people laugh, just whatever, you know. But it was his cousins who motivated him to pursue stand-up comedy around four years ago. You know, when I first started, though, I did get booed off stage sometimes. <laughs> I got booed off stage. But he didn't quit, even if it called for him to win a worst comic award and live from parking lot to parking lot. You know, showed up at open mics. No one knew I was homeless because I, I didn't tell anyone. His biggest bump in the road, though, losing his mother, who he says had a big heart. Weeks prior was his last conversation with her. And <laughs> she, I was making her laugh like I always do. And um, she was asking me about comedy and stuff. She was really excited. But you know, she had a heart attack and, and passed away suddenly. Now, when Albert performs, he thinks of his mother. Give it up for the women, I'm, I'm serious. He says one thing he wants people to remember after his performances. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> his laughter. I have a weird laugh, an ugly laugh. The very thing he used to be self-conscious about, but has learned to embrace. My friends don't even invite me places because they're scared I'm going to laugh. I'm serious. <laughs> Albert's confidence, laughter, and perseverance to impact others with his comedy is inspiring entertainment for What's Up South Texas. You know, it's all up to you. You can push that door down. It doesn't have to be closed. So that's my message is like, just keep going. Jaffany Gray, KSAT 12 News. Attitude, Luck huh? to him. Yeah, great attitude. It's very inspiring. Well, right. If you can laugh at yourself, then you're in pretty good shape. It's infectious laughter, though. <laughs> yeah, he's really funny. Yes. Nothing yeah. to laugh about in the weather forecast right now. Uh, well, no, and, and I think that uh, tomorrow night we're going to have to watch radar pretty closely. It'll be our friend. I know there's a lot going on tomorrow with Super Tuesday, but I think most of the storms will be nighttime. Late. So hopefully voting you know, it will be just fine, but uh, we will have to watch for a couple strong storms. Let's first start with the look outside on live cam. We got cloudy skies, 66 at the airport. Southeasterly winds at about seven. Humidity is very, very high. That's kept temperatures up this morning. And uh, we're at 64 in Comfort, 60 Las Maple, 68 New Braunfels. So everybody dealing with this warm weather. We're going to be in the 70s here soon. And as far as visibility goes, uh, some improvement there around Rock Springs. That was a one spot. Uh, actually, Rock Springs and Kerrville. They were dealing with fog a little bit earlier, but uh, some improvements there. Uh, dew points, very high, 60s and 70s here. When you start to get these dew points in the 70s, that's when you know that we're dealing with some pretty sticky air here. And uh, that is definitely in the muggy category. And this is overtaking much of East Texas. So we're getting that southeast Julie flow off the Gulf of Mexico. Still some dry air up in North Texas. And that's why they're seeing these cold temperatures. 35 Amarillo, 46 in Lubbock. There's a frontal boundary there too. So that they're getting some of the cooler weather. Uh, that frontal boundary, by the way, will get close to us tomorrow, close enough to maybe spark off a few showers. But it's a storm system that's off to the west that really is going to enhance our rain chances as we get into tomorrow night. Look at all the cloud cover that's coming through. We got high clouds, we got low clouds, so that means not a lot of sun today. Maybe a couple peaks during the afternoon. If we do see some, uh, that will really boost those temperatures. And uh, we're already going to be in the upper 70s, so a little bit of sun would probably take those temperatures into the 80s. Uh, there is a storm system that we're watching, a little swirl in the atmosphere right there. It's producing quite a bit of rain and snow there over uh, parts of Mexico, and it is moving in our direction, starting to turn the corner, and uh, it's going to be on a path that's going to take it right into Texas, give us the lift that we need. So here's what Futurecast is showing. By 5 o'clock today, Mostly cloudy skies. I don't think we're going to see any rain. There could be a couple showers off to our north and west. But by tomorrow, this frontal boundary starts to sink a little bit further south. That'll give us some rain chances in there, and then we'll start to watch for this line of storms. This is at 2 a.m. Wednesday, and the models have been pretty consistent here with the timing. So this storm system moves east, and so, uh, say, 4 o'clock, we're starting to see some storms here around uh, Bear County, San Antonio, and then it will move out of here by early on Wednesday morning. So uh, again, it'll be mainly an overnight thing. And then on the back side of it, we'll get some clouds, maybe a couple wrap around showers. The severe weather risk, slight risk. Uh, we've been talking about it this morning on a scale of one to five. This is about a two. And the main threats are gonna be hail and wind, maybe some flooding too. There's enough moisture in the atmosphere where there could be some heavy rain and that could cause some localized flooding in spots. 
Uh, again, the radar is going to be our friend uh, tomorrow night, and we'll keep a close eye on it. When we're talking rainfall, uh, maybe half an inch to an inch. That's the way it's looking right now. It, it's going to be a pretty good gradient, I think, from north to south. The better numbers will be up to the north, lower numbers down to the south. And well, north of us, we could be talking about two inches plus. So it's going to be beneficial to Texas. It's just going to come with a little bit of severe weather, unfortunately, I think. 77 degrees, the high temperature today. Southeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tomorrow we'll go 73. 80% chance of storms Tuesday night into Wednesday. Just a slight chance uh, Wednesday morning uh, as those storms exit it. And then the low 70s Thursday, Friday. Maybe some more chances of rain down the line there on Sunday. So probably a messy commute for us coming in early, but maybe it'll be gone by the time regular commuters start going. That's the hope. Uh, you know, there could be some leftover puddles for sure Wednesday morning, but hopefully the, the bulk of it is overnight. Great, thanks. Yep. It is 951, 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Hey. Whoa. Good news, everybody. Over there. I just want you to look at your screen and smile. <laughs> the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 430 Damn. points at 25,837. Let's yeah. just keep that going. Shout out to my dad who's about to retire. He's, a little, he's, a little <laughs> he's watching it. Today. He's watching it really close, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Well, that's that's good news to start the day. This is not so good news. That car is still sitting there, and nothing's around it, and the it traffic seems to be. Moving. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be hurting traffic too no, much. No, not too bad. 281 at Hilda Brown. Roads look dry. Packed, but that thing's moving pretty good right now. Justin? So, everything working? Yeah, we just got some clouds out there. Uh, not a lot of rain, but we will get some tomorrow. I think some chances of showers, some better chances of storms as we get into Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. I uh, could see a couple strong storms, so we keep an eye on that. Otherwise, some pretty good weather to round up. All right, yeah. Justin, this is for you. Did you come up with a name for the rover yet? Your own special name? Rover. S stick with Rover. Just Rover the Rover? Okay. Quality. Yeah. Rover the Roving Rover? Why not? Yes, thanks for that. Rover, rover, yeah. move over. Yeah, well, thanks for that one. You're going to love this one. Maybe uh, you can name some planets. Well, one astronomy student discovered 17 new planets. Wow. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is. All right, it's a female. It is Michelle Kunimoto. Kunimoto. Okay. All right, she was going through, uh, you know, the Kepler satellite that got all those pictures yeah, and stuff? Sure, sure. Going over all of those and discovered 17 new planets that had been overlooked. Okay, and one of them is, is Earth sized. It'll probably need a better name that says because it's called KIC 7340288B. It's really catchy. <laughs> what kind of name is that? It's one and a half times the size of Earth, but small enough to be considered rocky instead of gaseous and resides in the habitable zone of its star. Wow. So aliens live on it. That's a, oh, well, that's a bit of a leap, but okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, she's, uh, she's a real discoverer of planets. She, she discovered four while she was in college before. Oh, so, like, Thank goodness for smart people. Yeah, yeah, well, thanks for being with us, everybody. Good thing. We'll see you back here at noon. Have a great Monday.